So I want to share you with you guys this very interesting study um, of a young gentleman who I've known for a few years. Um, he actually works for the MTA. He runs up and down stairs without any symptoms. He's 40 years old. Um, he's always had a very severe mitral regurgitation and now hasn't really gotten much worse. However, um, he's starting to get a little bit more symptomatic, a little bit more winded and tired. I think as a fellow in the ultrasound tech, it's very intimidating to try to decide which leaflet is which, um, and let alone the segments. So um, the couple of things that may help you, the longer leaflet tends to be the anterior leaflet and the shorter one tends to be the posterior leaflet. In your lower angle, 0 to 60, your anterior leaflet tends to be on your left side and your posterior leaflet on your right side. So anterior, posterior, you can already start that to see that the posterior leaflet is quite flail. As a fellow, you always learn that the most likely leaflet to be prolapsed is the posterior uh, leaflet, specifically the P2 segment. And from an anatomical sense, it makes a lot of sense because that is the one segment that tends to be the least tethered. Um, so here you see the P2 segment popping up right here, extending beyond the mitral plane annulus, leading to a severe regurgitation jet that is eccentric like this. So here we have the left atrial appendage, um, very clear, kind of big. Now we always talk about pulmonary vein reversal, so I want to show you something interesting here. When we have pulmonary vein reversal in the setting of severe mitral regurgitation, it's not always equal opportunity, especially with an eccentric jet. You have reversal in very often in one vein, but not the others, or two veins, but not the others. That the, the vein here, it's pretty laminar, really not a lot of reversal of flow. And if we were to Doppler it, here we go, the Doppler, I think it's up here. Um, the vein flow is predominantly upwards, so not a lot of reversal of flow. However, and I did a terrible job of clipping this, so I apologize. So now if we were to look at the right side of veins, however, it's not more of a color image here. You can see that there is a lot of reversal, a lot of turbulence here. Um, so we were to Doppler that, now we get our true mitral um, pulmonary vein reversal here. So that's what you're seeing here. Negative bubble study, essentially no color flow through and a no uh, bubble flow through with agitated saline injection. Interestingly here, again, we're injecting through the arm through the SCC. So there's a, there's a little bit of a, a eustachian valve here. If we were to push the agitated saline up here from the IVC, we would get a much more straight shot. So here you see the bubbles are opacifying everything underneath the eustachian valve but not above. Okay. Moving on. So in the gastric view, I was able to get a much better um, on-axis view of the mitral regurgitation jet. So here we are. And um, I've got a much better jet here. So we're much more on axis. So if you're not able to get an axis with a mitral regurgitation, uh, eccentric mitral regurgitation jet in your metasophageal view, consider your gastric view. I mean, I just got lucky here. This is kind of cool. So I can use this to use my PISA later. I'm not really sure if I'm going to use PISA in this case, however. Um, it's, it's hard to do it with a jet that's that eccentric and that turbulent. But I mean, it doesn't really matter in this case because it's going to be severe. And here's a 3D view of it. So it's a lot of clutter here. So I ended up optimizing my window a little bit more and um, decreasing the gain. So that really helped eliminate some of the near field clutter. Uh, this is a surgeon's view, so the anterior and inferior views with a um, flail segment kind of pointing up here. Less dramatic than I would have liked to see, but not bad anyway. Um, it's 3D, live 3D, doesn't really add much. It's pretty to look at. All right, I hope that was helpful.